Hey, what's going on guys? I have a cool project for you today. We are going to be build a typewriter using vanilla JavaScript, no framework. Actually, I had a request to do something like that a while ago, and I thought that was a good idea. If you are new here and you want to take your web dev skills to the next level, subscribe and also hit that little bell so you get notified every time I post a video like this one. Let's get started. Alrighty guys, starting really from scratch, we have this folder with just a picture inside of it, okay? You're gonna have a link down below in the video description. Let's fire up our VS Code, alright? Alright, let's open up our folder, okay? That's our desktop. And here, we are gonna create our file six structure. We're gonna have an index for our markup. Also style.css, we're gonna have also a little bit of styling, okay? Our main fog is going to be JS. So let's create our app.js. Okay. And here, let's create our markup. Hit exclamation mark and tap. And here, we're going to create our link that's going to connect our CSS to our markup. Okay. And the title, let's say something like uh, typewriter. effect javascript okay nothing too fancy here our main fox is going to be teach you how to use javascript to create, create that effect okay and here we're going to have a container and in this container we're going to have an h1 i'm going to put here my name of course you're going to use yours or your company okay and still inside this one we're going to have a spam okay but let's give it a class because we're going to use that on CSS and also JavaScript. Text type and let's keep it empty, okay? JavaScript is going to populate it later on. We're going to have also a H2, say something like welcome to my website, okay? That's all we need for the markup and down below here we're going to have our script, okay? Connecting to our app.js all right all right now let's put things side by side okay we are going to be code on, on the right and you're going to see the result in real time on the left so you understand everything you're doing okay let's jump right into the uh, css all right all right we are in the realm of the css where a part of the magic happens, okay? For a start, we're gonna copy our font for Google Fonts, all right? Just use the import. And now let's go to the body. Let's use the font that you just select for the Google Fonts. And let's have Sun Serif as a fallback, all right? Height is gonna be 100 VH, a full screen. And let's pick a nice background picture, all right? I'm going to leave it down below in the video description a link for you to download those free backgrounds, all right? It's going to be a no repeat, center, center, and the size here is going to be cover, all right? As you can see, we have a nice picture here. And the next step, we're going to get rid... Let's give the color white, okay? And let's get rid of this very ugly scroll bar okay of the flow hidden as you can see we have this white text we cannot read it very well so let's add a linear right at the end to our background okay we're gonna go for this color okay black and transparency dot five to the same color okay and we end up with this nice background okay nice hero all right, this part is done, so let's go to the container. Okay, we have just this H1, H2. The layout here is going to be flex. Let's change the, the main X direction to column, okay? And now we're going to justify content center, okay? And give it a height of 100%, all right? Also add some padding in here. I see zero top and bottom and three ring right and left, all right? 
Now let's be more specific and grab the H1 and H2, okay? And let's change the fonts. Font weight here is going to be a normal. And let's also add a margin of dot for rain. Alright. Now let's go to the H1. Let's make it bigger. Okay. Font size is going to be 3 RAM. And let's also apply a nice color. Okay. It's going to be FFF6EC. And for the text underneath, rub someone is in here, the H2, we are gonna change its font size, okay, to something else. So font size, let's say 2 RAM. And the color, let's pick this white smoke. Alright, now let's grab our typewriter effect itself, the text that is gonna be here, and let's uh, give it some style, okay. This is going to be populated by JS, but for now we're going to hard code high so we can visually know what we're doing, okay? Let's type here, text type, okay? And let's give a margin left of 10 pixels. Also, font weight is going to be normal. And let's pick a nice color, okay? DD77. 32. All right, this part is done. In here, we want to create a cursor, okay, it looks like we are typing something. So let's copy this one and use a pseudo class after, okay, and create this. First of all, content, nothing. Let's give a margin left of 4 pixels, a width of 1 pixel. Height, we figure out the best way here is going to be 5% after trying the error, okay? And the body right, 4 pixels, solid, and the same color of the text, okay? As you can see, we have it here red, and we have to add this animation. Let's call it blink, about 5 seconds, infinite, and easy. Right. The next step, we're going to create that blink animation. Now, let's give it animation using the keyframes called the animation blink. In here, it's quite simple. Okay, all I have to do we go from zero percent to one hundred percent. Okay, and in here, the opacity. I mean, type opacity is going to be zero, and at one hundred percent, the opacity is going to be one. It's simple like that, so as you can see, we have a blink effect working, okay? We are now in the main section of our project, okay, JavaScript. Let's have this variable called text, and you're gonna have an array with a couple of strings here. Developer and creator, designer, you can have whatever you want here, alright? And down below, let's create another variable. This one, let's call count. And this, this one is gonna uh, keep track of those individual strings, okay? Now let's hit index. It's gonna do the same, but it's gonna be every individual uh, letter, okay? And now let's create another one. Let current text. Uh, let's set it to empty. This is going to be changed, it's dynamic, okay, but our logic is going to change it. The last one, let's uh, let letter set equals also to nothing. This one is going to uh, keep track of individual letters, okay, it's going to be changed. Down below here, let's create this function, let's call it type, okay, and we want this one to be a self invoke function. Instead of come here, down below here, and say type, and we don't want this way, okay? So we're gonna wrap this like this, okay? Have this parenthesis here. And another one here, okay? So this is gonna be self invoke function. 
down here, we want to compare the length of our count to the variable text, okay? As you can see, we have one, two, three files here. So every time we go to three, we want to reset that, okay? So let's use some logic down below here and create that. Here is the comment here, so you can see what we're doing. If the count is equal to text dot length, then something is going to happen. What's going to happen? We're going to reset it back to zero. So let's have count and set that back to zero. Okay. So I, I believe you, you understand that it's quite simple. We have one, two, three files here. Every time it it's go to three, it's going to reset back to zero. And down below here, we are going to have the current text and we're going to select the index. Okay. Text and count for the index. So we are going to use count to always select the specific text we are going to do something with. Okay. And down below here, let's assign letter to the current text. The text that is current selected. Okay. And let's get it slice index zero okay and let's add one more to it okay what this is gonna do this is gonna go for here zero and add one 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 okay until it goes to the end we're gonna have something like that okay take a look All right, we have assigned our level, and now we are gonna uh, select the class and change its content to better. Okay. First of all, let's grab the document query selector, and let's pick that class, that text type. As re remember, it's the one that you use in our markup. Okay. Please allow me to show you. Is this one here, okay, our spam, we're going to populate that using our JS. And here, let's have the text content assigned to better, okay. Wherever it is in there, okay, we're going to put in our markup. Okay, we're almost finished. Now let's go to the last part, one of the last parts, okay? As soon as the length of the letter is equal to the current text, we are going to go to the next one, okay? So, if letter, let me type here, letter length dot length is triple equals to current text length where we have here the developer creator of design when this is true what is gonna happen we are gonna re reset to zero okay all right let's type it here count plus plus so we, we go to the next one we go to the creator and then we go to the designer another thing that's gonna happen here is we're gonna reset also the index okay index equals zero so we, we go instead of going like this one 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 and continuous no we go to the next one we go to the next one, creator, and then we go one by one character, okay? This is done, and the last part of, of this, 
is just set the, the timeout, okay? Let's have our function here, type. And the speed is going to be 400 milliseconds. Of course, you can choose wherever you want here, okay? You can mess around all of this function and do it your way, okay? All right, guys, that's all for today. I really hope you like it the way I like to make this for you, okay? If you like it, you know what to do. Subscribe and you also hit that little bell. So every time I post something like that, you're gonna be notified. Thank you and I see you in the next video.